More drama in the boxing scene as Errol Spence runs the ring. That rhymes. Confronts Sebastian Fundora. Sebastian Fundora, fresh off of a win, a pretty Im important win against Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu is no longer undefeated. Tim Zhu lost his WBO title. Sebastian Fundora, yes, the same guy who got knocked out spark cold by ben Brian Mendoza in his most recent fight and went inactive for over 50 months. That same Sebastian Fundora is your unified champion at 154 with WBO and WBC. You're wondering how the heck did this all happen? Well, there was an there was an elbow during the fight. It was not an intentional elbow. It was an unintentional elbow, but that elbow changed the fight. Early on, Tim Zhu was clearly the victor. He was clearly going to deal with this dude, as I said he should. Once the elbow hit, I want to say around, what, three, four, whatever. It wasn't that long. And then it's a gusher. It's a large wound on Zhu's face. He's bleeding like crazy. And his cut man sucked ass straight up. Cut man, terrible cut man, one of the worst jobs I can think of. And, you know, you think about Badu Jack and the horrible gash he had and Edwin Valero, and the gash he had and so many fighters where it's just, they just had horrible gashes. This was like those. The difference is that when this happens, Zoot didn't seem to have a plan B. He was still in the game, but he wasn't, he didn't, there was no urgency to him to get Fundora out of there like I think he could and should have. It seemed like he was still content to stay back. And I'm talking early on, I'm talking like round six, five, six, before the impacts of the blood loss really hit him. It just seemed like for whatever reason, he was still coasting. And I feel like he should and could have taken out Fundora. He didn't do it. So Tim Zhu is no longer undefeated. Sebastian Fundora is unified champion. So then Crawford, he had lobbied to be the mandatory for WBO at 154 because he wanted to get the winner. He said that for months now. Well, Errol Spence, he was on social media. He said, I want the, I want the winner. And then he's calling himself the shark now. So then he rushed the ring. He went in the ring. They didn't show him entering the ring, but he shows up and basically says, and he was respectful about it. He basically just said he wanted to have the fight. He wanted to fight Sebastian Fundora and Fundora seemed to be amenable to it. Now that after the fight, Sebastian Fundora's promoter basically said Crawford's got to get in line. Now, because Crawford lobbied to be the mandatory WBO, that can only mean one thing. If they're going to fight Errol Spence, it can only mean that Fundora would have to vacate WBO or be stripped. One of the two would have to happen because if he's if he's got Crawford as mandatory, he's going to have to fight him for the WBO. But Spence is the next high ranked for WBC because Keith Thurman's out. Keith Thurman, believe it or not, was like number one for WBC. And you're like, how the hell did that happen? I don't know, but he was. <laughs> so since Keith was out, Spence comes in, and so now Spence is in the run for the WBC. So my theory has always been that Fundora drops that WBO in the trash, just like Riddick Bow, and ends up fighting Errol Spence because Spence is bigger money. You're like, how the hell can that happen after Spence got knocked out? You got to understand, Errol Spence's drawing power didn't decrease. If anything, I would argue, this is me, I would argue his fans are chomping at the bit to see him back in the ring especially at 154, because we don't know if he was drained against Crawford. That creates a narrative. It creates a story to tell where it actually might increase anticipation to see him back in the ring. He's got a rabid fan base. Many of them were very disappointed at what happened to him because we know he didn't show the hell up. We also are worried about him. We're concerned physically for him. So there's this dual play going on. Him going back in the ring, I think might excite his fan base to show up and say, we want to support the guy, one, but two, we want to see where he's at. Physically, is he still in the game? Sean Porter on the podcast even said he thought Spence might be done because the car wreck, I mean, God, the guy had two car wrecks and then he gets a complete beating by Terrence Crawford and then allegedly he's draining himself down. He's having all these physical issues where Sean Porter, Sean Porter thought Errol Spence might be hanging it up. So seeing Spence show up at the event, so he took the time to travel out to this event took the time to clean himself up. He looked like he was eating well. He didn't look like he was skinny or anything. He was big. He was he was stocky. Goes in there. He looked reasonably clean. He was still slurring because of who he, you know, the accident and everything. But he looked cleaner. He looked like he really wanted to do it. And most importantly, he looked humble. And so I believe this may drive up a narrative that sells the fight. And I think his promoter knows that. Terrence Crawford, as Spence would say in a different world, can't sell out family dental. And so because Crawford doesn't sell his own fights, it's hard to justify fighting him. That's why Canelo didn't want to fight him because 
He knows Crawford can't sell it. It's a one-side sell. It's not just about skill. You got to be able to sell the damn fight. If you're just a boring fighter and you don't sell, nobody's going to want to see you fight. And Crawford's been fighting that his whole 147 career. So now here we are. Crawford's going to be inactive. At this point, he's going to be inactive for a whole year because even if he does get a fight signed, you figure an eight-week camp, he's going to be inactive for a whole year. We don't know what that's going to do. Is he going to be affected by the inactivity? He's older. He's, what, 35, 36? He's older. So inactivity is harder on the body. If you're not active, it's hard on the body, which is why I said and I maintain this almost cussed dude should have fought Boots Ennis and not ducked him for the IBF. He should have fought Boots Ennis. That would have kept him active. It would have kept him in the ring. Yes, it's a threat. I understand that. But look where he's at now. It's a bigger threat. He should have just fought Boots Ennis and get it out of the way. Deal with it. Don't let yourself get stripped. Just fight your fucking mandatory. Get it out of the way so that you stay active and not sit on the sidelines watching Earl Spence walk up in the ring and basically cuck you and take a fight that really probably should be yours. And you would be able to justify it if you had beaten Boots Ennis and you were still undisputed champion. Now you can justify it because you're undisputed champion. That's how Devin Haney was able to justify the fights that he was able to get. Devin Haney right now has a better resume than Crawford. How can you justify that? Devin Haney was making the right moves. Devin Haney took the threats. Devin Haney defended. That's my beef. That's my frustration. It's got nothing to do with personal. I don't like when you're sitting on the belts, not defending them. Spence was defending his. So I gave him a pass because he's defending the title against mandatories. Whether the mandatory should have been mandatory is a different conversation. I just want to see you're actually defending the damn things. If you're going to be the champion, you got to defend them. Crawford, Duck, Boots, Ennis, and has not defended any of the 147s outside of the WBO. So now I see sketchy business with the WBO, and that pisses me off. I'm not suggesting that Crawford shouldn't get an opportunity at 154. I'm saying if I'm in Fundora's camp, I'm looking at the fact that Spence took a ragged beating in his last fight. Spence looks beatable now. Spence doesn't look anywhere near the killer now. Fundora's riding off a high because he got the W. Fundora's got height. Spence has never fought somebody who's taller than him. So now you think of all this and you put it together and you, it's meat on the table. They're looking at Spence like he should be the easier win. But more importantly, Spence is going to draw money because Spence is the bigger draw. Crawford is not a draw. So they're looking at it like Crawford's going to be a bigger threat and he doesn't draw any money. What's the incentive? He's not undisputed at 147. If he was 147 undisputed, we could sell it, which is why he should have fought Boots. So I think it's an interesting situation, the whole thing. But it, it's also silly. All this is avoided, uh, avoidable. It can be avoided, right? It's like, if you just fucking fought Boots and stopped ducking him, th this could have been avoided. So speaking of Boots, right? BLK wanted the fight with Crawford and Boots Ennis, Steven Espinosa from Showtime. All the NSB and other places swore that Boots ducked Crawford and said that, you know, he was offered the fight and all this. Bozy Ennis said, BLK approached us. There wasn't going to be a fight without Showtime. Steven Espinoza from Showtime came out and confirmed there was no offer. We didn't make an offer. There was nothing for him to duck. He didn't duck anything. There was no offer because Crawford told us, ignore what BLK was talking about. He doesn't want to fight Boots on BLK. Okay, that's different. If Crawford didn't want to fight Boots on BLK, then why did he fight Avanesian on BLK? Do you understand how this is going? There's not a situation where Crawford really wanted to fight Boots in a situation where he could have done it, which would have been BLK. BLK was throwing money like crazy. So if he wasn't going to fight him on BLK, he damn sure isn't going to fight him straight on Showtime when there's no money. BLK was throwing money. Why was Avanesian worth fighting but not Boots? Crawford would say, no, BLK offered him the fight. Showtime would say, BLK couldn't have offered the fight because it still came through us. Who's lying? I don't know. But there's a common pattern, which is a, a clear avoidance of Boots Ennis that it doesn't make sense to me because if he had just fucking fought the man later, like fighting, fighting later after you deal with Spence, use it as your one defense, then vacate, move up to 154. Now you can justify it. Do what Jamel did, say, I want to walk, do the ring walk as undisputed so it helps sell the fight. And now you can sell the narrative and then go against the winner. Didn't happen. So now we got a whole jacked up 154. You know, it's all screwed up. Uh, who owns belts and who's fighting who? You still got Danny Swift out there floating in the wings. Apparently, Keith wants to come back and wants to go to 154. Everything's all screwed up at 154. Hopefully it gets settled. 
But as of right now, Sebastian Fundora, if I'm going to call it, I say he drops WBO in the trash like a Riddick bow and goes after Errol Spence for the money. He knows it's a for him in his mind. It's meat on the table. This guy was just beat down in his last fight. I would rather fight him. And I really don't want to fight Crawford for WBO fresh off the war I just had with Tim Zoo. I would rather fight Errol Spence because I believe it's a winnable fight. Now, me personally, Leicester at CombatTalk.fm, I don't think that's winnable. I think Spence timbers him just like Mendoza because we don't know how much stronger Spence will be at 154. We haven't seen him. He fought 154 when he started, and I think he looked a little bit better, but he wasn't ready. Here, he might be ready, and Fundora was too tentative against Zoo. It's going to be an intriguing thing, but right now, 154 is jacked up. Let's see where we go from here.